Well, um, I'm Ken Roberts, and I have been a part of the acting world, either on stage or off now, for 33 years. And it's kind of funny, I got into acting because a very good friend of mine um, was in a show at the local community theater up in Gainesville, Texas. And, uh, and it was a show called The Foreigner that, it, you know, it's one of those crazy comedies. And I had, I'd been on stage a lot, but as a lead, as a front man for a hair band in the 80s, um, obviously those days are over. But anyway, <laughs> but I went to see him in this show and I was so, while the show was great, I was fascinated with the process. Um, and I thought, you know, this looks like it would be a lot of fun. Uh, I, I think I can do this. And of course he was convinced, he's like, oh, you'd be great at this, you know? And, and so the next show that they had auditions for at that same theater was a musical. And as a front man for a hair band, I knew I could sing too. And um, we are, um, we're sort of the actors who can sing in community theater, or men, men especially, are rare. Um, you know, and when somebody steps up to auditions, um, a male shows up for auditions and opens mouth to sing and actually can uh, find his pitch and hold it and whatever, the people in the background are going, oh my God. But <laughs> so that's kind of what happened to me and got really involved. Um, in the in on stage after that first production and just one thing led to another after another and i ended up becoming a technical director at that theater because i had a construction background and and uh just never realized how i would get bitten by the proverbial bug if you will and how it would lead me down this long and winding path to where i am today and um but it's 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 given me some opportunities um, I would say um, because I have um, people have seen me, they've heard me. Um, I, you know, sort of graduated to voiceover work, um, not up in Gainesville, and ended up working a, a gig at an FM radio station for a while because they liked my voice and thought it was good for FM radio. And um, and then of course started doing commercials and and things of that nature. I've always thought I had a face for radio, but apparently <laughs> some other folks thought I would be okay, especially in comedic roles. And so I was getting a lot of commercial work, doing funny commercials. Um, and that led to me meeting Charlie Landers, who is another uh, local filmmaker who um, and produces all kinds of work for festivals all over the country as far as I know. And um, and Charlie liked working with me and got the opportunity to do a lot of work and ended up on a, in a feature film um, and got to work as close as you and I are right now to Brad Johnson, who was a fairly prolific film actor um, and um, learned a lot, absolutely learned a lot. but. But my love has always been uh, theater, live theater, and uh, there's just there's no experience like it. You know, it's funny we, you and I, have talked before because film. Well, as we experienced this morning, film. There is so much that goes on that is not has nothing to do with actors, and um, and as an actor, I find it fascinating, but I also find it somewhat frustrating because such was with Nail 32, I was on set for four hours and my scene with Brad Johnson lasted probably five, six minutes. And, um, but the work that goes on that actors have absolutely nothing to do with. I mean, it's, I never felt more like a prop in my life. <laughs> so it's like, oh yeah, now we'll just bring the guy in to sit in front of the camera for a couple of minutes. And then all of this work starts all over again in a different spot. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's fascinating. And, and I enjoyed it, but I don't know how professional actors 
I, it's just, I, I know why everybody has a trailer now, because I've got to go somewhere and get away from the chaos. Uh, because gosh, you know, there's so much, there's lighting, there's sound, there's, there's cables, there's, it's, it's insanity. And it's, it's like working through a maze to get to your spot in front of the camera. So it, it's, I, I love that experience. Um, and I would certainly jump at the opportunity to do it again. But, but again, my first love will always be the theater. Well, what I would say uh, as far as what I, you know, see as the negatives um, regarding local film production, um, there's not, uh, that's not the kind of business that the Chamber of Commerce is going after. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're all about jobs, 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 jobs. And, and while film industry, the film industry does have a lot of jobs involved, you know, based on what we've already talked about, you know, as far as grips and gaffers and, you know, whatever, um, they, you know, the city and the chamber, I would say, um, they know that all of that type of work is temporary. Um, you know, unless you have a movie studio in town, there's not steady work for those folks. And so it's not the type of thing that the, that the city or the chamber promotes very much. Now, they're always very accommodating if you need an accommodation. You know, if you need a street closed for, you know, for a couple of hours, you know, for a parade or whatever, uh, the city's always very accommodating in that regard. But it's not a, you know, it's not something that they they're actively pursuing. Um, and I think part of it's a little short sighted. I think maybe they don't really realize what that type of activity, what, you know, they're not thinking about hotel rooms and, and things of that nature when they're thinking about a film production in San Angelo. And, you know, the, the geographics are a challenge. I think, um, San Angelo, is literally in the middle of nowhere. And we, it's, it's a gem, it's, it's an oasis in the desert, but you know, I mean, I can't go anywhere in the country that I have, don't run into somebody that knows about San Angelo, but San Angelo is not a tourist destination. If it's like you get west of I-35 and everybody kind of forgets we're out here. And we have a very vibrant arts community here, not just performing arts, but visual arts. And, and a lot of, I don't know that our, our uh, chamber and our city do enough to promote that um, as an arts destination in the desert. There's nothing that can't be overcome, I would say. Um, if, if there were the right people in the right places, I think that, you know, because, um, you know, gosh, we already know that the city Will, for the right kind of opportunity, will offer tax breaks and, and what have you, like a lot of uh, big cities do uh, in, in, in states like, you know, um, Atlanta. You know, Georgia has a huge blooming um, film industry because of what they offer. If you, you know, come here and, and shoot your movie and, and we'll make it worth your while. And, San Angelo could do that if they wanted to, but right now the want to is not quite there yet. San Angelo, if somebody wanted to come to San Angelo to produce a film, they would have actors falling all over themselves to, for any part, you know, extras, whatever. Um, there, there's the, the, the resources fr in front of the camera are not lacking here. Um, and certainly, I don't know of any stage actors like myself that wouldn't jump at the opportunity to get on film. And I touched a little bit on the positives already in, in that how much live theater is going on here in San Angelo and how, and it, you know, San Angelo's got a symphony, San Angelo's got a museum of fine arts, San Angelo has got, the arts community is alive and well here. Um, and I think those things would only enrich a, a film opportunity in town. There's, you know, and again, our cost of living is going to be a lot cheaper um, than almost anywhere else you can go. And, and Texas not having a, 
a state income tax is, is a beautiful thing. It's, it's a beautiful town. There's an incredible amount of locations, both the natural world and historic locations as well. I mean, there's um, some of these buildings that were, were built in the late 1800s, early 1900s that would just be phenomenal um, as, a, as a film location because there's so many of them that have been restored to their original um, I'm thinking of the Cactus Hotel and, and a lot of places like that, that, you know, while it's, the finish is newer, it's the same design and same aesthetic that it had back in the 1900s. And, and of course, goes without saying that, you know, places like Miss Hattie's um, with their history, and uh, I don't know if the tunnel still exists, um, under, from Miss Hattie's to the building next door that used to be a bank. Um, but, you know, there's so much rich history here. And of course the fort, I mean, who would not want to shoot the way they've restored that fort and continue to restore that fort? Why would that not be a stellar location uh, for that type of movie? Um, you know, barracks are already there. I mean, you know, uh, the parade grounds, everything is pristine, just like it was. I, I kind of like the fact that a lot of our river walk here is still a little on the wild side. You know, I, we don't need to put concrete over everything. <laughs> you know, a little nature every now and then is not gonna hurt anything. So, and I like the way they did that visitor center on the river and, and you know, how they've got all so much landscaping and everything and uh, more of the natural world because it, it kind of is part of what makes San Angelo a destination. There's no shortage of outstanding locations, outstanding people. You know, I, I cannot imagine why anyone wouldn't wouldn't look at this town and these people and not see it as an ideal opportunity. I, I still get a random text every once in, in a while from somebody that's finally seen Nail 32. And like, I, I saw a movie and I think you were in it. And and I think that kind of thing for, for an actor Anyway, and, and of course, everybody locally that worked on that, because there were a lot of us from San Angelo that worked on that film, and and um, it was a, such an enriching experience, and it can, it you know, it's something that I'll always carry very proudly, and and I think the others that were involved will too, and I'd love to see those kind of opportunities uh, become more frequent for the other people that do what I do, um, I'm not getting any younger. And there's certainly plenty of folks um, that work like yourself, that work backstage um, and would love more opportunities to work. And I think um, if we could somehow get a blossoming film industry going here in San Angelo, we'll provide some stellar opportunities for everybody, actors, you know, producers, um, directors, you know, even the technical folks that, that put all of this stuff together just so that uh, some schmo like me can look good. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, I think this, um, it would be a golden opportunity for anybody to become a part of, um, cause I've, I've enjoyed the limited experience I've had with it. And I think everybody else would too. And, and not everything shot in Hollywood anymore. In fact, very little I think is actually shot in Hollywood anymore. And and God, why 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 can't we get on the map? 